So, good evening. I thought I'm going to make a little video here for us. Since Nate asked me yesterday in the other uh, post about the switch for Clay's car for the uh, throttle position switch. And I kind of only half answered his question about the Lambda control because he referred to it as a K Jetronic and it actually is a KA Jetronic. And I want to show you a couple things here. What I got is this is something I found online. This is the Robert Bosch service manual and it really is only the uh, cover sheet for the workshop manuals they had in a three ring binder years and years and years ago. And um, just to give you an idea, is we want to talk about this here on how the Jetronic actually came about. So we have Audi listed in here, for instance. And what they did is they listed out the model. And then you can see the mixture control unit, fuel distributor, airflow sensor, injection valve. Then you have the fuel pumps. And with Bosch, they all have the same part numbers. No matter what vehicle you got, the first six numbers or seven numbers starting out with a zero. And then they go by individual. The last three digits are really the critical ones in the Bosch part numbering system. And um, they have as the first model, the 911 Porsche. Let me just see if I had one more. And the reason why I wanted to go with Porsche Here's the Mercedes-Benz stuff for the K Jetronic until 1979. And after that, it became the KA Jetronic. And I believe um, the history on this was such that Porsche was the first one who actually implemented the K Jetronic. And they were actually the ones who developed the K Jetronic with Bosch for their 911 Targa. Uh, for the U.S. market, I believe it was, if I'm not mistaken. Because I don't think there is any vehicle in here in this early list of the original cars. This is BMW, the 320i, 320i California. They had them from 77 until 79. All of the K Jetronics end in 79 and they were replaced by the KA. Jetronic, which is the K Jetronic with Lambda regulation or Lambda control. So it was Porsche. Let me just see what we got here. Saab came in in 1975. And then the last one was Volkswagen 75. I'm not quite sure what the dash was. I'm not sure about that. And then Volvo 74. So first, Porsche. Porsche was the original one with where the cage tonic basically started. And um, then you can see this, they went on until 79, including the 928, which was their big one. And um, all of them had the cage tonic in here. And this is the list of the Mercedes-Benz models for the cage tonic let me just get this in here let's see if we can get this better this way yeah so we had the 280e that i think that was a 123 so was the ce was a 123 and the 280 se was the 116 and then they had it on the 450 sl slc sel and se from 1976 until 1979 and of course, then the 6.9 headed from 1977 until 1979. The previous version of the 450 of the 4.5 4 liter and I believe of the 3.5 liter as well was the um, DJ tonic, uh, which was a pulsed injection system, basically. Um, so this is the this is the Bible basically on when you want to find out of what parts you actually need for your car in terms of the Bosch part numbers, uh, including the warm up regulator. And I want to show you this that the, the 280 to 2.8 liter had actually two different versions Federal California, Federal California high altitude. 
federal California and high altitude. And you can see this also here with the um, uh, beginning 1977 and 1978 models of the 450 and of the 350. They had a high altitude version of those. So if you have a 280, 450 or 350, uh, between the years from 1978-79 on the 280 and on the, in the year 77-78, you have to be very careful when you purchase a vehicle of the, of the W116 or 123, um, whether or not your car is a high-altitude high version. The way Mercedes-Benz has this listed out is here. And uh, they have the labels on here where you can see this federal version, California version, high altitude version in 1977. But Bosch tells us they actually had that in 77 uh, and 78, so for two. And the plaques are marked here and next to the radiator. And um, they will, I will show you this here. They look like this. This is basically what you can find there. And the codes are structured by model year, then 20 California, federal in California, 21 just federal, 22 just California, and then the combustion system. Um, in the information plate up to model year 1979, you will find the model year, the idle RPM, the timing degrees uh, after top dead center at a RPM setting and the emissions valued idle with a CO uh, tester in the exhaust pipe and the valve clearances if that's applicable. This would be looking, this would be this plate here. They had that in until 79 and they went away from this um, in the, with the 1980 model. So you have, this is the number two. This is in the door basically. And that is the information I just mentioned. That's where they're telling you what your timing degrees and everything is. So now with the high altitude version here, which Bosch also pointed out here, this is what the HA means here. HA, let me show you this. High altitude, um, and we have it here again. They have federal version, high altitude, red, black. Those cars were primarily sold in the state of Utah, Denver, Colorado, Colorado, Wyoming, or any other state like uh, the Dakotas, where the altitude was at least 4,000 feet. So if you are in Florida, in Texas, Georgia, or in California, somewhere where you're really you know, less than 500 feet above sea level. And you get one of these cars here, you will have to change the warm-up regulator over. Otherwise, you will have a very hard time um, running your car. Your car is going to be running waste to rich. And I'm going to show you the numbers which you would have where you can identify this with. The warm-up regulator number is 438. One four zero. They all start with a zero in the beginning. So four three eight one four zero. And if you have a zero thirty one, California, or a zero forty three, in your car, then you know. Or actually a zero forty two. Just looking at this here, on the six point nine liter. If you have a six point nine liter, and you have a zero forty two in there, these are the three high altitude versions. And you're probably going to be running waste to rich at the lower altitude at sea level. This is not a problem if you drive for a short term time, uh, you know, with these at low sea, uh, at low altitude, and then return back home. Say, like if you live in Denver and you drive to the East Coast, uh, you know, to New York or Washington, that wouldn't be a big deal. But if you are permanently moving one of these vehicles, you want to change the warm-up regulator. Now, the reason why this thing is called a warm-up regulator, I'm going to show you this actually in the Bosch service manual because I didn't don't have the Mercedes pump service manual here. The Bosch service manual 
basically explains this, I think, from Porsche. This is now the Porsche service manual from Bosch or the Bosch service manual for Porsche. Um, because Porsche didn't have one, so they did this one first. And here you can see the 911. Um, now that's a yeah, 911 over here. And that's the 924, which should have been a Volkswagen. And then you have here the 928, basically. The 928 is the closest to the 4.5 liter and uh, 3.5 liter uh, version of Mercedes-Benz. And it has basically the same parts in it. And they work by the same principle, as you can see. Uh, and like I said, this Bosch did not have, or Porsche did not have the manual ready. So what they did is they utilized the Bosch manual for this. And the, the critical thing here is they're explaining here now the warm-up regulator. And as you can see is the warm-up regulator has two mounting brackets and it is usually mounted on the engine. And I'm gonna show you this in the back here and then you will understand this of why they're calling it the warm-up regulator. It just said, you see this, let's see what Bosch actually referred to this device when they had it, yeah. Bosch itself, this is the Bosch manual, you can see this, they called that a warm-up regulator back in the 1970s, before they changed that over to control pressure uh, regulator. So yeah, warm warm-up regulator control pressure. That was the official thing. And this is out of the Cajetronic Porsche manual, just so you have an idea. The important part in this here, let's go with the 928 since that has the engine in it here, which is comparable to say like a 4.5 liter engine for Mercedes-Benz. So this is their test sheet. And this is basically what you're seeing here, is your control pressure measured from a, in reference to the ambient temperature. So when you do an adjustment on the warm-up regulator to get your minimum and your maximum pressure range, then you wanna make sure you have to start out, you actually need this table here to do this correctly before you can make any adjustments. Um, if the warm-up regulator is calibrated in a, like at Bosch, the temperature is temp climate controlled in that room where the work is done. And in this case, it would be 20 degrees Celsius. So your pressure would be here. This is the upper and lower band. You can have, you would be at 1.6, 1.7, 1 1.8 bar for the cold pressure. And then as the pressure goes up, you would have then see a rise. And this rise in temperature is the rise where the warm-up regulator is actually mounted to the engine block or the intake system. So the warm-up regulator basically increases in temperature with the engine as the engine warms up. The original thing they did is was without the uh, heat element in there, and they tried to get the bimetal to actually move solely by engine temperature. And if you watched Ken Berksma's video the other day, where he was working on a 280E or SE, I'm not quite sure which one he got there. It may have been a 280E with the uh, 110 engine in it, he moved the warm-up regulator. And that warm-up regulator was put in that particular position where it is very difficult to be accessed on purpose to fulfill this graph, basically. The Mercedes-Benz graph is gonna look uh, very similar to this here. And, um, you know, they, they vary depending on what warm-up regulator you have and what vehicle it is. And they also give you here the idea of what your maximum warm pressure is going to be with vacuum and without it. And you can see on how these things may change or may not change um, between the different numbers. Again, they have an 053 for the 928 
and then 063, which changes here just in the inch, and, uh, inch mercury, uh, or basically that is the metric version for inch mercury. Um, and uh, that basically tells you that the apply or they bind up at the same pressure but with different vacuums applied to this to get to the uh, full pressure and then when you basically have the collapse in vacuum when you go to full acceleration that vacuum disappears and it will lower this and back down and it enriches it and um, so this is basically on how Bosch has this and Bosch has a booklet for these models here which are listed in here in this uh, service book, which was the cover sheet basically for this, for these models here. And I found that the Bosch manuals are actually better. Um, there is, I think, two versions on eBay available right now for $180, which cover, or which have the workshop manuals for all of the vehicles listed, BMW, Audi, Saab, and uh, Volvo and Porsche and Mercedes and Volkswagen in this service booklet because like I said, it's just came together. So the, the, the three ring binder basically contains these things here, including the service bulletins. And now the, this was the KJ Tonic. This was the original one. The reason why Bosch or Porsche wanted those was for their 911 with the uh, better performance than the carburetors they were using at the time and the um, other advantage was because of the direct injection into the engine you could uh, control the amount of fuel actually going in there much better and you can actually change the adjustments so for tuning purposes on on these um, 911 they were able to get much better horsepower ratings at lower emissions out of it and that was the reason why they went for it. The DK Jetronic was really not designed to um, do emissions control primarily. The emissions control was a side effect, which they weren't looking for as much as, um, you know, what people may think, but it was a performance issue since you can directly inject fuel in certain quantities uh, very exactly into the system and you can change that very easy or uh, fairly easy you know with the warm-up regulator you can make adjustments to it and you can change of course the mixture ratio on the um, um, lambda control setting or screw on the which wasn't called that at that point it was the mixture control basically on the airflow sensor unit basically or airflow metering unit um in 1980 or um, actually it was later on i found this as a different supplement and a completely different um uh service manual this is the group 14001 and this covers the models 1971 to 1980 for their cover sheet uh, for the name plates and that sort of stuff and the, the seals which were incorporated. However, with the, uh, in chapter 14, 14050, this is where Mercedes-Benz, this is the only documentation where Mercedes-Benz introduces the KA Jetronic uh, for the 1980 models. And this was primarily the 450 SEL and or 450 SE, 450 SEL, the 450 SLC and the 450 SL. That's where they were incorporated. And here we have a overview over the system. You can see here the timing valve. We have now an oxygen sensor. We have the oil temperature switch and that's it in terms of inputs and the throttle position switch. So we have one, two, three inputs and one output on this ECU unit. And basically whenever the throttle position is not at idle and it is not fully open, then the lambda control takes over. If the oil temperature switch 
has actually switched and that switching happens at 15 degrees Celsius, which is somewhere between 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And that then will regulate this here to a 50-50 or 50% 50 duty cycle based on the readings of the oxygen sensor. There's no RPM information going to the ECU. Uh, there's no coolant temperature, no altitude information, nothing going into the system here. This is not even an analog computer. It is basically a circuit board, which has um, two digital or three digital, two digital inputs, three digital inputs for the two switch positions and the switch from the oil temperature switch, an analog output and an analog input for a, a J type thermocouple, which is in the oxygen sensor. And um, so we're based on this reading here, you have primarily op amps in there and some discrete logic to do the NANS NOS uh, and that sort of function of when the lambda control actually should start. This is basically how simple this is. Now, what this system does is, as you can see this, it is basically uh, taking pressure off the fuel distributor and routing it through this valve, and then it returns it back into the return line from the warm-up regulator fuel. So both return lines from the timing valve and from the warm-up regulator come together on the fuel distributor. So you basically can disconnect it here, and you can see if you got fuel coming out of here, the thing is basically working. If there is no fuel, then uh, your valve is not working or the computer is not working because it should either be at 60 40 or somewhere at 50 at a 50 percent duty cycle depending on how you set this and how the reading comes back the signal light for o2 sensor in the dashboard on the instrument cluster is hard wired meaning it is actually in the well in the um a speedometer cable from the transmission. It is basically put in there. So the transmission cable, um, or speedometer cable, which is mechanical rotary, hooks up to this thing. And then from there, they have a second one going up into the speedometer. And there's a counter in there and that will count to 30,000 kilometers. And then the light will come up and there's a reset button that is underneath the steering column. So when you take that cover off, you can reset this. It has no electrical function whatsoever, solely mechanic. Um, and that's basically it. And on this system here, the warm-up regulator, um, basically they used to have this on the KJ Tronic. The fuel damper was actually in the feed line to the warm-up regulator that was eliminated. Now the warm-up regulator connects directly to the fuel distributor. And um, that's basically it. So you can test this also by just applying, if you disconnect and you apply 12 volt to this here, you should see an enrichment um, of the uh, fuel flow because that is the warm up regulator also uh, regulates the upper and lower pressure systems or the, the differentials you have between the upper and the lower chamber. Um, so that is kind of what sums this up in a, nuts, in a nutshell. So if you're trying to take this out, you're going to miss a vital link, which will give you the needed boost in terms of enrichment when you accelerate or when you get off the throttle or when the car is at idle. Otherwise, your engine may stall out if you turn your power steering all the way to the left or to the right with the air conditioner running. That may just, uh, you know, kill the engine right there and if you don't have this enrichment in here. And this is already an aluminum uh, fuel distributor. Otherwise, the uh, vacuum advents for uh, on the, or the vacuum advents and retardation on the uh, distributor is about the same as it was. And you have the thermal valves in here. This is the 40, 50 degrees thermal valve. Then actually this switch here, the oil temperature switch is 16 degrees Celsius. 60 degree Fahrenheit. This is when they consider the engine warm enough uh, to be switched between uh, 
50 duty cycle or lambda control and 60 40 uh, you know enriched mode basically so to speak so it has actually a, a fixed mode and then it goes to lambda control as it would be in any regulated cut system but this is still what we consider an unregulated catalytic converter system um, for that matter because it doesn't have all the other feedback uh, correct feedback signals like a full temperature reading on your coolant temperature so this thing really doesn't know how warm it is the altitude is not taken into consideration uh, you know the rpm is not taken into consideration speed is not taken into consideration none of this stuff and we have no egr valve on this car and this car does not have an air pump but we have an air inblow system this is what you saw on the timing chain tensioner that was that big round connector on top there and that's why the thing got three mounting bolts in that uh, on that round connector on top there which was open there's a hose which connects through this valve here the switch over valve 40 and 41 is a aspiration valve that is basically this here this is the connection down here on the into the engine and that blows air from the air intake it sucks itself in with the exhaust gas so that's how they're mixing the air in and that's how they got rid of the air pump on this on this particular version of it and this is specific to the ka jetronic this is the first one and then in this 14-050 document they show you here now the components of the lambda control the oxygen sensor we have the ecu unit we have that new throttle position switch which you can see here has only one one mounting hole the same one as clay's got and we have the timing valve here they're calling it frequency valve later on it was referred to as a timing valve and we have the oil temperature switch and then they have the voltage supply relay which we know now with the uh, excess voltage protection this has become the over voltage protection relay and then basically they go through this here and they explain this and you can see this this is the um, throttle body basically the way clay got it with three vacuum ports and the switch is right here and this is where the two vacuum ports are and this is why that had only one mounting hold because of this vacuum and they changed that later on on the one i had uh, from the 380 sl these two vacuum ports were moved over here on the, this side this was eliminated and they used two mounting patterns which they maintained this is the location of the oil switch oil temperature switch this is where we hooked up in our videos our oil pressure gauge the manual oil pressure gauge when we're cranking the engine over to make sure that we had pressure on there and um, these are the parts basically here uh, as i had described it with the additional air moving into or being pushed into the exhaust valve channel on the engine block and that will increase the fresh air in the exhaust and that will reduce the emissions without having a pump and uh, this is basically you can see this here this is how this hooks up from the air filter and this hose here down here connects to the uh, idle uh, to the timing chain tensioner to that big hole which was down there and um, let me see that's just the catalytic converter systems on how they had this with two catalytic converters here in the front main unit here so this is why that is called a three-way unregulated catalytic converter and well fuel tank evaporation system and uh that is the fuel the carbon canister here so this is this all was new and this is the document which actually explained for the very first time to the mercedes-benz service world of what the ka jetronic actually looks like it however mercedes-benz did not refer to this as it they just said this is the emission control system basically so they, they eliminated the use of the cage or tonic or anything else. This was just the lambda control system. 
And uh, I will explain this a little bit more um, when we get to working on Clay's car. So if you want to know more about the um, KA Jetronic system, which is really the predecessor um, of the KA Jetronic you have in the first generation W126, um, then that might be of interest to you. The big difference here is we still have the adjustable idle speed control screw where we can actually adjust this by hand with the screwdriver. This didn't have the idle speed control valve with the idle speed control unit yet. That came with the 126 units. Otherwise, the system itself is pretty much the same. Um, also, the ignition system, the ignition control module is the same as you have in the 126. And with that, you have a great night.